Kalmykia is one of the most fascinating places in all of Europe, but few people outside Russia have heard of it, and a surprising number of Russians don't even know where it is. One reason you may not know it is that for 250 years, Kalmykia has been a Russian colony, during which time its people have suffered numerous persecutions, including ethnic cleansing, and yet they endure. Unsurprisingly, an increasing number of Kalmyks are fed up with Russian rule and want freedom. In 2022, Kalmykia's largest opposition group even issued a declaration of independence. The world's media mostly ignored this, but now, with the Kremlin looking shakier every day, the idea that the Russian Federation could unravel doesn't look nearly as unlikely as it once did. Could Kalmykia become Europe's first independent majority Buddhist country? There's a chance. Here's the story. Roughly 400 years ago, a Mongol people who called themselves the Oirat migrated from Central Asia to the banks of the Volga River, forming a new state now known to history as the Kalmyk Khanate. What Kalmyk means is disputed, but it's always been a name imposed by outsiders on the Oirat people, who even today still call themselves Oirat. In the 1600s, Kalmykia became an ally of the Russian Empire, providing military protection for Russia's southern flank. Over time, however, Russia began treating Kamikia more and more like a vassal state, until eventually Catherine the Great turned it into a colony, just one of many in Russia's expanding empire. Except, Kamikia has always been very different from Russia's other colonial possessions. Although on the edge of Europe and surrounded by Turkic and Slavic peoples, the Kalmyks are ethnically Mongolian, speak a Mongolian language, and are also majority Buddhist, followers of the Yellow Hat School of Tibetan Buddhism, which is led by the Dalai Lama. Things were not easy as part of the Russian Empire, but the Kalmyks were mostly allowed to live their unique lifestyle in the arid Volga Basin, so long as their men continued serving as soldiers whenever the Russian Empire went to war. The 1917 revolution, however, was a complete disaster for the Kalmyk people. As part of an anti-religion campaign, the Bolsheviks closed all 175 of Kalmykia's Buddhist temples, while agricultural collectivization destroyed the traditional economy and way of life. Then, in 1943, Stalin declared the entire Kalmyk people to be traitors and ordered them deported to Siberia. 93,000 men, women, and children were put on cattle cars and shipped thousands of miles east. Over 16,000 died in the process. Kalmyk culture and language were suppressed and could have disappeared, but survived, barely. Following the death of Stalin, the Kalmyk people were finally allowed to return home in 1957. When the Soviet Union collapsed in the 1990s, things appeared to improve for Kalmykia at least initially. The Dalai Lama visited in 1992, consecrating the site of Europe's largest Buddhist temple, and naming Tello Rinpoche, an American of Kalmyk descent, as the new religious leader of the Kalmyk people. Kursan Ulumjinev, an oligarch and lifelong chess fanatic, became president of the New Republic of Kalmykia in 1993. His administration invested millions to build a chess city in Elista, which then hosted the 1998 Chess Olympiad and the 2006 World Chess Championship. For the first time ever, the wider world was noticing Kalmykia. Except, the problems caused by 200 years of colonial occupation were still there, and have only gotten worse. Unemployment in Kalmykia is stubbornly high, and over a fifth of the population lives below the poverty line, making it one of the poorest regions in Russia. The economy is still largely agricultural, but the arid climate makes farmers reliant on irrigation and there is a severe water shortage, while the water piped into homes isn't even safe to drink. Life is so difficult, the population of Kalmykia is steadily dropping, as locals leave in droves to find better opportunities elsewhere. Unsurprisingly, Elista's chess city is now largely abandoned, while the rest of the city continues to decay. Kamikia's colonial status was demonstrated in 2019, when Dmitry Trapeznikov was appointed mayor of Elista. Originally from Ukraine, Trapeznikov had previously been a leader of the breakaway Donetsk People's Republic, but left a few days after his boss was killed by a car bomb. His appointment as mayor of Elista, a bizarre move obviously orchestrated by the Kremlin, was a shock to the Kalmyk people. They protested in their thousands, but were ignored. In 2022, Trapeznikov was promoted to deputy chairman of the Kalmyk government. As has happened in many regions, Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine has increased tensions, with Kalmyks once again fighting and dying for the Russian army in a foreign war. Telo Rinpoche, Kalmykia's Buddhist leader, denounced the invasion days after it began and was forced to flee to Mongolia. The invasion also convinced the largest and most established of Kalmykia's opposition groups, the Oirat Kalmyk People's Congress, that the Russian Federation was beyond saving. They issued a declaration of independence in October 2022. But is this a viable option? Kalmykia has a small population and an even smaller economy. 
This is not an advantage, but it does mean that the average Russian would hardly notice if Kalmykia did break away. And if republics in the South Caucasus and South Urals did the same, it's easy to see Moscow deciding it has bigger priorities than Kalmykia. Ultimately, independence will depend on the will of the Kalmyk people, and there is no way to know what this is at the moment. But we do know that as part of Russia, the Kalmyks have endured centuries of oppression and persecution. If they now decide to try a different option, could you blame them?